Okay everyone, plenty to chat about after yesterday's victory over Aberdeen. We did the live reaction with me and Ewan from Babity Bowster yesterday. That is linked above if you haven't yet come across that. Give it a watch. On today's video, we're going to round up some of the other latest news happening at Celtic. We've got some cup draw news. We have got ticket ballot discussion. Who doesn't like a ticket ballot discussion? A good bit of chat about Kyogo as well. Plenty to get through. Before we get on to all that juicy stuff though, I just want to put out a wee sub shout. I usually do this at the end of videos, um, but I thought I would stick it in a nice prime time spot in this one. And the reason for that is that we are on the verge, less than 200 people away from making it to 22,000 subs. And this month, November, has less than two days to run as well. So you know what I'm going to say. Let's see if we can get to 22,000 subs by the end of November. Go on, if you've not done it yet, make me happy. Put a smile on this grumpy man's face. And talking about grumpy men and women to an extent as well, let's take a look at some of the comments from yesterday's live stream. Starting off with Michael Mayer. Mayer? I think that's how you say it. He's saying, need to somehow get to the January window, still in touch at the top and get some reinforcements. Squad is really light and the bench is looking weak again with the injuries at the moment. But if you said at the start of the season we would have the first trophy of the season, hopefully of course, be in Europe after Christmas and hopefully match them for results and beat them in January. A lot of respect for the them, Patter. And be no worse than one point behind them at the break. We would have taken that all day. Again, perspective is the key here, Michael. I think when you look at Celtic's overall season, you would certainly have taken where we are at at the moment. In that cup final, yes, we would like to have been in the Europa League post-Christmas. It's not happened, but the Conference League has a bit of appeal, I think, for a lot of Celtic fans. And obviously, we're still in touch in the league at the moment. I think Celtic have an opportunity to be top of the table going into the winter break. To do that, we would have to win every single league game, including the derby against them at the start of January. And they would have to drop points in one other league game, which given that they've got to go to Hearts, they've got Hibs this midweek, Aberdeen as well, I think. Um, Dundee United have to go to Ibrooks, I'm sure. That is, uh, I would say, likely that they'll drop points in at least one game. So concentrating ourselves and wouldn't it be amazing to be less than three points behind them going into that derby match and have a chance to beat them and go top of the table. So yeah, perspective is key. Things are going well now, but we know how quickly things can change. If we hadn't have won yesterday, everyone pretty much would be running about with their hair on fire right now. Right, Gary Duncan, we move on to the kind of Kyogo chat here. Uh, Gary's been subbed for four months, so thanks for the support, Gary. We need a new number 10 slash centre mid in January. Turnbull isn't good enough. The amount of times during a game Kyogo makes a run and he opts to play a simple one metre pass to the side instead is so frustrating to watch. And kind of in tandem, fancy word with that, Robert Sutherland, who's been subbed for over a year, the amount of runs Kyogo makes a game is unreal. Are the players not seeing it so frustrating at times? I touched on this yesterday. There were actually a few times in the game yesterday when you heard a roar from the Celtic support when a Celtic midfielder had the ball and it was a roar for a run Kyogo was making. The fans almost see the runs Kyogo is making before some of the Celtic creative players see it. And I understand why that might be the case, because obviously in the stadium you kind of have a better view of the game than when you're actually on the pitch. That's why, you know, being a footballer is such a skill. Anyone can, you know, say what to do from, from high up in the stand with a bird's eye view. But if you're on the pitch, it's much more difficult. But having said that, I don't think we're getting Kyogo involved in games nearly enough. I don't think we're playing him in nearly enough and nearly as much as we were when he first joined the club. Now, part of that will be that opposition teams have cottoned on to the fact that Kyogo running past the last man is probably the biggest threat Celtic have. But I would just like to see he's doing far more of that, whether that's Turnbull, whether that's McGregor, whether it's the fact that Tom Rogic has been missing. 
it's something that we, we definitely have to work on. It doesn't always need to be a perfect pass to Kyogo. It doesn't need to be Jota against Ferenc Varos for Kyogo. Put it in behind and let him chase it because even if he doesn't get first to the ball, given the pressure he puts on defenders, chances are you're going to win a throw-in or a corner and it's going to move you up the park. I don't think we've done nearly enough of that. For all the chat about Ange's passing football and neat two, three-yard passes and all of that, and it's great on the eye, I think Celtic are at their most devastating when we're feeding balls in behind. Buzz Lightyear, 11, not the real one, has been in touch. He, he's been subbed for three months, saying Tom Rogic is a missing link for Kyogo, the one midfielder who works his way through the middle and lays it on a platter for him. Yeah, I think Tom Rogic has been a massive miss, and hopefully Tom Rogic coming back into the team is going to kick Celtic on again. Ange said that Tom Rogic will be back for Thursday. There is no doubt about that at all. I think he'll probably start as well because he's so important to Celtic and I think you might see a big difference on Thursday night. By the way, just on a separate point, I'm going to touch on this over the next few days. Thursday night's a massive game. You know, if you think yesterday was big, Thursday night under the lights is going to be incredible against a Hearts team that I think are only two points behind us. A real chance to, to put a bit of distance, you know, beyond them and depending on what happens at Easter Road the previous night between Hibs and Rangers, maybe an opportunity to close the gap as well. It's a biggie and it's uh, it's going to be a cracker. Now, going back to Kyogo a little bit and a potential boost for Celtic, we got some interesting news today. Now, it concerns Kyogo and the Japanese national team. Now, as you may have heard, you may not, this may be news to you, he is set to miss Celtic's first couple of games back after the winter break. Now, in the league, they're away to Hearts and home to Dundee United. Two really tough games, two games that we've already dropped points in earlier this season. But it seems like Celtic may have had a wee bit of a break here because Japanese FA chief Kozo Tashima says that the Japanese FA won't fight any decision that could stop their foreign-based players from playing in their crucial doubleheader at the end of January. Now, Japan are scheduled to take on China and Saudi Arabia, both at home, and there's also a friendly against the world heavyweights of Uzbekistan the previous week. However, Japan has now closed its borders due to the new Omicron variant of COVID and they may be forced to play these matches with Japanese-based players only. And if that is the ruling from the government, it seems like the Japanese FA won't fight that at all. So, kind of fingers crossed that happens. Obviously, I'm not wishing the, the new strain of COVID to, to you know do well or anything like that. But it would certainly be a boost for Celtic if we had Kyogo available for those two games. Obviously, that concerns Tom Rogic in Australia as well. He's set to be away as well. They might be slightly different. There's also a game prior to that in the Scottish Cup, the fourth round draw that could be affected. On that note, the draw for that is actually tonight. It's after the Brecon versus Darvo game. Probably going to be about 9.45pm or so. The draw that is, and it is live on the BBC Scotland channel. There is a list of the teams that we could face. As you see, some of the minnows there, the likes of Clyde Bank, Auchinleck Talbot, Banks of D, who all got big wins at the weekend, and East Kilbride as well. We played East Kilbride a few years ago in the Scottish Cup, you will remember. So that's the kind of potential there for Celtic from biggest teams, most glamorous games to the ones at the bottom, which arguably are the ones you would really fancy. In the other cup competition, a ballot has been called to sort out who gets a ticket for the Premier Sports Cup final against Hibs on the 19th of December. The ballot was for season ticket holders who are on the Home Cup ticket scheme and who purchased a ticket for the St. Johnson semi last weekend. Of course, ballots tend to be divisive, some people miss out, some people get lucky, and as always, this has frustrated a lot of people. For people who were successful in the ballot, you have until Friday at 5pm to purchase your ticket. And in terms of 67 Hail Hail, Celtic have another huge week. Hearts Thursday night, Tanadice Dundee United on Sunday afternoon, 12 o'clock. 
We're going to be building ahead to both of these games and reacting to both of these games in equal measure. Hoping to chat to Hearts and Dundee United fans at some stage as well, but we'll see how that goes. We're also expecting Scott McDonald on the channel this week, so there is loads of hap. You're doing one of these outros, it's going amazing, and you're about eight words from the end of the video and you say loads of happening. It's honestly the toughest job in the world, this. Um, there is loads happening on the channel this week. You should definitely get subbed if you've not done it yet. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks for watching. We're back tomorrow.